da 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 we are live da 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 gonna do a celebrate with some of the saddest soda in the world the saddest soda what yeah. a great what a great title caffeine free diet pepsi buy some sad soda today <laughs> Today's Hub Games Hangout stream brought to you in association with the people at Sad Soda. <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing I have a yeah a machine on the side because I've got this extra light here lighting up the table. So I, I thought it was just a healthy glow. It is. It is literally a healthy glow. Just you can see it just kind of there. Ah, uh, it is all good. <laughs> How are you anyway? I'm doing okay. Well, I'm relieved because we are going to get to see Anita's parents. Which is Christmas. good. It's been kind of like on and off, on and off, on and off with the changes that have been happening. And it yeah. It could I, all change before then. I know it could. When, it's like, like when you're yeah, off. We're, I think, 9.30 tomorrow morning. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's like on the road and no one can stop us at that point. <laughs> it's like, just keep driving. That's the law. Yeah. Because Rory said <laughs> We have a, a sticker to put on our, our camper van that says emergency service, just in case. I mean Hey us. I can I can half believe it. <laughs> I just lean out the window going, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. That's it. Just go around. We're all frontline workers. Yes, even the short one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be all right. It will uh, be good. It will be fine. Everything will be okay. Meanwhile, I'm just going to probably just sit inside and play some video games. <laughs> I've actually, I've seen Hades uh, is on discount at the moment. It's calling to me. Oh, it's Siren Song. Yeah, mm. it's good. It's really good. <sighs> it's just time. I know. Not, not time, but prioritizing that over other stuff. <laughs> I mean, Yoss has an opinion, and that opinion is... Bye. Okay. Buy it. Because okay. it's so good. Um, I got Terraforming Mars on Steam today. Oh, did you? Because, hmm. you know, it's something I'd like to play on, on stream, so... It was like something like 70% off or something, so I was okay. like, yeah, okay, thank you. It's like three or four quid. So I... Actually, I have two game-related things this week. We played Fantastic Factories the other day. Ah, okay. Um, I had picked it up at Gamma just before lockdown oh. and had played it once with Anita, and then we played it with um, Keelan as well. So we played a three-player game. Uh -huh. And again, I mean, it's very solitaire, like apart from... We, when you're taking turns and picking the initial card at the beginning of the round, you just do your own stuff. And like Anita said, this game is for gamers because it is so easy to cheat and fluff, you know, your action and kind of misspend and maybe have an extra ore that you shouldn't really have to, to score something. But the game would be way too long if you tracked everyone's turn. Oh, if everybody was like being micromanaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. so, the, so they made it you know, my sense is they made it simultaneous just to speed it up, but uh -huh. it makes it really prone to cheating. Uh, accidental cheating as well. Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. I always have sort of like an issue and it's like, oh, you, you know, anybody could cheat playing this game. It's just like, well, yeah, then don't play with that. First. No, but it's the accidental. Like I've done it before mm. where I've either didn't collect a resource or overspent one. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice that seeing things kind of trigger off the comboing that happens hmm. within it. And there's always that, oh, I want to build this factory, but I need to spend that factory to build this factory. And it's like, oh, which one do I get rid of? Uh, so we got to play that. And also my Dice Throne Adventures arrived, surprisingly, Ooh. before Christmas. Nice. So I backed, I backed it after playing it with Manny at PAX Unplugged, I want to say. No, the PAX. Gen Con. He was Gen Con, actually. Was it? Bloody hell. 2019. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, yeah. The before times. The before times. The yeah, long, and long it, 
it arrived just in time for Christmas. So you're going to bring a chunk of it down with you to... And his parents I... live in a very small house. Um, I don't think I could put that out on the table. Actually, I don't think I could fit it in the camper van, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that big? Uh, I would reach over and grab it, apart from the fact that I would probably knock stuff over. It's about, like, so that wide. Uh -huh. And this is the depth. So it's that kind of, like, square, right? But it's uh -huh. got that depth, yeah, to it. Okay, that's yeah, chunky. It's pretty significant, yeah. And that's not even got... Then I'd have to bring... Uh, the actual base game with me or uh -huh. you know one of the character packs as well uh -huh. um but yeah so that means it probably actually won't get opened until after christmas uh, sad face the saddest of faces i think i'll, I'll bring marvel champions with me because at least i know that'll fit into something small to bring yeah because you've got your little travel mm -hmm. travel pack which is cool. i'm gonna bring ant-man and kang i think <laughs> cool, cool, cool. give it a try much I think what I've been playing, if anything. Um, already talked about Delve. That was. Mm -hmm. Which is actually uh, on offer on itch at the moment. Is it itch.io? Yeah, itch. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you can get the three sets as PDFs for $17. That's pretty good, actually. I mean, I like yeah. having the physical thing because well, I'm old. So I didn't support. Yeah, I'm the same. I'd actually just rather get one and pay for it and mm -hmm. use it. And it's like a tenner, and you know that it's going into Anna's pocket as well. So that's mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. Um, but, oh, Race for the Galaxy. Played Race for the Galaxy. That's cool. I saw that. It. I haven't played that in so long. I know. And that was that was my thought. I was like, going, I was really worried that I was going to screw it up because it's been so long since I played it, and it it is like. If you if you learn a language and you don't use it for a while, you get super rusty and it's like a lot of it falls mm -hmm. out of your head. And that definitely happens to me with the language of the icons in mm -hmm. um, in Race of the Galaxy. And then the really nice thing is that the, the tutorial is super helpful and not over long. Because like, mm -hmm. I went through the tutorial bits in like 15, 20 minutes or so. And um, yeah, it was it was really lovely. It was like putting on a really comfortable but slightly tough pair of shoes. Um, Ones that make you walk. Yeah, it's like come on, yeah. You know, you you, you do your walk in, and you you know you've had a good journey. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was lovely playing it again, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and then a little while after, uh, I got. Uh, so Ken gave, sent me a message a little while after. Um, I don't know where he is, actually. I'm surprised he's not here yet. Um, saying, hey, I spoke to the folks at Temple Gates Games, and here's a bunch of codes to give away of Race nice. of the Galaxy, Roll for the Galaxy, Shards of Infinity. And it's just like, oh. oh. Is that on Steam or what? And they're all on Steam, and they all only work on Windows. So, <sighs> yeah, no, sad face. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is... Um, tomorrow and because i'm going to be streaming tomorrow anyway for like for a christmas eve thing because it's thursday mm -hmm. uh and then i'm also going to do some on friday anyway because friday night is gaming night and um i'm just going to give them away on the streams so nice yeah, actually cool. want i was kind of moving some games from here to the studio and uh -huh. Shards of Infinity was one of those ones i was holding in my hand going i want to play this more but it's really only going to get played solo and you have to buy the expansion pack for the solo rules. Oh, hmm. the words. Which I think when I went looking for it at one of the cons was sold out, so I didn't uh -huh. get to pick it up. But maybe Ken would have the rules, because I just need the rules, I think, unless there's extra cards that you need uh -huh. for it to work. I don't know. Have a dig around on BGG, see if anybody's... Mm. No, nothing? No, they just referenced that it's in that expansion. Uh, I see. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. oh, well. Sad face. Oh, we did also play Drexel. Why do I know that name? Let me go look it up. Uh, no, I have it here. Hang on. Drexel. Card game. Let's go. Oh, the one with the pigs. Yeah. Dirty pig. 
Yes, that's the one. <laughs> Keelan really likes it. <clears throat> it yeah. is such a it's such a take that game. It's all about like just <clears throat> screwing over your opponent <laughs> all the time. And this is good, clean family fun. That's all good. Man, I should throw you guys my copy of um, Ace of Spies, the most dirty take that game in the world. Is that the one you, your one that you'd worked on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I demoed way. that in Essen. That's when we first met. Ah, such a long time ago. When we went for pizza, I think. You have better memory than me. Way better memory than me. <laughs> well, I just remember sitting up at like on a high stool, I think, and there was a bunch of us sitting around the table. And you were playing it. Yeah. I barely remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. Forget like what we actually did like <laughs> nine years ago or whatever. <laughs> Fair enough. It's like, I just feel yeah. like I've known you since like school. Yeah, school will do. That's fine. Yeah, we should fake one of those pictures of us in like school shorts and <laughs> shirt and tie. <laughs> in a headlock. It Here's Rory getting his GCSEs. Yeah. Here's Michael getting his leaving, sir. Oh, no, hang on. <laughs> Those things that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, man. Are we going to play something yes, on, this, on this toy day? Um, yeah, I was nearly going to do a, a Rory and change it at the last minute, but I said, no, I'm going to stick to this, and we'll play it, and we'll see how it works. Okay. Um, so it's the Companion's Tale, mm -hmm. Which I had read before. Uh, it's a map making storytelling game where you tell the tale of an epic hero righting wrongs and saving kingdoms. The hero mm. acts and leaves others to tell the tale. So we're just telling the story um, about the hero. Um, you play the hero, the closest companions. Uh, whose uh -huh. version of the heroic tale will become canon and whose will be a footnote to history? Yada, uh -huh. yada, yada, other stuff. Um, so. It intrigued me because it was that idea of you're building a map. Now, I've looked at some videos. You don't really build a map. You capture oh. stuff on you capture stuff on paper, uh -huh. but it's not necessarily a map. So I'm gonna kind of try and challenge us as much as possible to make it like a map. Okay. As we go. Um. So yeah, we, I, have, I have, we have interfaces. Yeah. <laughs> which is gonna um, be an adventure. So yeah, I'll bring up. Uh, your screen just to show it, to show the the kind of the overview of how the whole thing works. Uh -huh. Okay, while you're while you're sitting up there uh, at the stream, oh, can okay. I? Yeah. Yep. Mm, that's not doing. Can you add yours? That's that's there. People can see. Oh, it. it's all right. It wasn't showing up for me. Okay, yeah, and you've actually frozen, so give it a second and it should probably catch up. Okay. So, yeah, we okay. have uh, two things that we can see here. So uh, we have the overview and we have the act structure. Yeah, so um, so the Commandant's Tale is played out um, across these three acts that are bookended with the prologue and the epilogue. Uh, the prologue is where we're going to answer four questions. So mm -hmm. we'll be presented with two questions each, and we have to answer one of those questions. And that's kind of like forming the world uh -huh. that we're going to inhabit. And then we will play through the three acts and the epilogue basically just kind of wraps things up at the end. Um, so the within each act, um, we go through the sequence on the right-hand side of the uh -huh. screen. So we start with the historian phase where we'll reveal a theme card and we'll switch screen in a minute to my desktop here uh -huh. where we can see the game being set up. Um, so we have the historian phase where we draw a theme card and answer some questions about that theme. And I'll, I'll kind of read aloud the intro text because it's really kind of simple Okay. Uh, to explain each bit. Then, uh, so we're actually playing the duet version of it, which is the two player version of the game. So it's a bit uh -huh. more concise, which I think kind of as this works given the time that we have okay. as well. So we'll go through two rounds where essentially one of us will start as the companion and we'll tell, we'll basically create that companion, um, which is uh, based out of a combination of three cards, again, uh -huh. which I'll show you um, via the camera. Cool. You'll tell a, 
you, about your relationship to the hero and i'll kind of uh -huh. give you some i'll read out what it says about how we should be doing that um then the other player plays the witness and reports on something else happening elsewhere in the world uh -huh. so they're kind of building out the world elsewhere in a way that doesn't involve the hero um and then the lore keeper records some element of culture within the world as well and i'll explain that a little bit more they recommend that the opposite player should be the um the cartographer who writes the stuff down uh -huh. but i think it might actually work better if the 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 person who's like the companion is also the cartographer i, I think it kind of makes more sense to draw the stuff as uh -huh. you're talking about it yeah I, I, I find i would i would work better that way uh -huh. um so round two just switches it where the companion you know the next player starts as the companion we do the witness the lore keeper and then the biographer is where we call into question essentially the other players we cast doubt on the veracity of the other person's companion okay you know that they they played the, the narrative that they played so the uh -huh. idea is that it should be quite uh contradictory not contentious that's not necessarily contentious but co contradictory in terms of the narrative we're telling uh -huh. um the one thing the game doesn't really guide you on um to give you a satisfying experience from what i can read and from the reviews i've looked at is the arc all right so act one is all about things about how how the world is and why it needed the hero essentially uh, -huh. uh two is where the heroes rise how they um kind of dealt with the stuff that was going on i guess and then uh -huh. The apex is how it all comes to an end or an epic conclusion. There's nothing really within the game to nudge that it, apart from like those three headings. Okay, so, so something... you, you just have to actively like push it down those those channels. Yeah, so it's trying, I think, not to spin it out too far with too many threads, but to push it forward. Okay. Um, in a two-player game, we're going to be playing essentially the same companion in each act so normally you'd be switching companions and playing different companions uh -huh. but i think in the the two-player version you can change the nature of the companion but they're kind of the same person but they're essentially their role as companion might change uh -huh. um and that's defined by a card which i'll explain as we go as well okay so that's it we're going to go through those three phases and then the epilogue is essentially we kind of wrap it all up all right, so Rob was looking at picking up this yesterday. So, hey, maybe this will inform your decision. See how it goes. Yeah. Um, right, so, so let's, let's work it out. What world are we inhabiting? That's the first thing that we need to... Yeah, so to I'm going to grab the book, and I will... Um, so, yeah, we'll start with that. And what I would do suggest is I'm just going to switch back to my stream for a minute. Um, so I think if people kind of visually see some of the cards and stuff that we're talking about. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and then we'll kind of go back. So these are the cards. We've got kind of um, the companion cards, which are going to essentially define who that character is. So they were rescued. Um, you're a rival. You're an oracle. Uh -huh. You're an outsider. Things like that. And at the beginning of an act, Four of them are dealt out, and you're going to get to choose one of them. Okay. Um, there's also theme cards, which explain what kind of thematic role that you played. Um, so in this case, prophecy. Uh, once the people were in the thrall of a great prophecy, or once the fulfillment of a prophecy had unintended consequences. So that's uh -huh. giving you some kind of narrative nudge. Um, we'll use these in the first um phase of an act which is the historian role uh -huh. where we'll talk about something in relation to that but then uh when we're choosing a companion we'll i've kind of set up for the first uh act you would take two theme cards choose one of them link it to one of the four face-up companions and then you will reveal like a face card uh -huh. which is essentially how the character looks okay and that will become that character for it. And like I said, we're going to essentially play that character through the whole game, but they're going to shift and change. As okay. Play. Um, so I have added in some story cubes because one of the comments I read was that sometimes it can be hard to get inspiration for uh -huh. things. And we all know if you need some inspiration, 
You can turn for your story cubes. Uh, is that a is that a full set there, Rory? Is that, that a, a yes? Complete? I will. So I will reveal. So, yeah, the collector's box. So it's got all of the sets in here. So uh, Primal, Emergency, Fantasia, Voyages, the Originals, uh, Actions, Astro, Heroes, and Mystery. Dun, 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 dun. Very nice. Okay. So I will be kind of jumping backwards and forwards and reading some stuff. Okay. So let me just kind of start with the... Yeah, so um, if you actually want to switch back to uh, the other stream, and uh, if you want to zoom out a little bit, Michael. I can. So maybe if we go to where X marks the spot. So I just marked that as kind of like suggested starting point. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so I'm literally reading from the manual. Uh -huh. um, so prologue. Uh, if there's anything I need to check beforehand. So no, I don't think so. Um, in the prologue, players will build a world by answering questions about it. The starting play person is a volunteer. On your turn, answer the first prologue question aloud, as if you are an inhabitant of this world. Yeah, so a lot of it is done from the perspective of I, uh -huh. and we don't give any of the characters names. So it'll always be the hero, or it will be like the oracle. Uh -huh. As the oracle, I blah blah blah. Um, so on your first on your turn, answer the first prologue question aloud as if you're an inhabitant. Then draw on the map representing the answer, leaving space for additions and change during play. Uh, continue clockwise with the next player, working your way sequentially down the question list. After you've answered the four questions, the prologue ends and Act One begins. Um, tip, if you're stuck, ask other players for suggestions. But don't try to oh, read consensus. Roll chat. Your story <laughs> chat. Yeah. chat, indeed. Um, so, yeah, so one of the things is kind of... So we haven't talked anything about this at all. So, um, But I suspect we'll get into a groove pretty quickly. Um, yeah, you know, it's not like we don't have any experience in storytelling games. So, uh, I mean, one of the things would be, I guess, tone. Um, and again, because that's the thing that can quickly wreck a game if we're not uh -huh. in alignment on that. Um, and I know, like, I tend to play the kind of, like, serious with humor is usually uh -huh. my kind of thing. What's your take do you want to go super serious do you want to go kind of <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah. Two, days, two days before christmas let's go full-on grim dark yeah. extravaganza here at the end of the worst okay. year of modern humanity yep let's make it happen okay <laughs> fair enough no like uh, yeah just like you know drama but with I, light I, I i think of it like earnest <clears throat> it's gonna yeah, be okay. earnest in whatever it, it tells okay yeah um and again, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be fantasy. It can be, uh -huh. I guess, historical, sci-fi, alternate reality. Okay, so... EastEnders. I actually watched that for the first time in years yesterday. Yeah. Waiting for Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I, I would love to do an EastEnders RPG, or like a soap opera RPG. I know there's like... Um, one came out last year that was like... Uh, I think it was on Kickstarter, actually, earlier this year. Um, that was about telenovelas, like the Spanish mm -hmm. Spanish language ones. And it's like, oh, the drama of Enrique, that sort of stuff. <laughs> it's like, I cannot believe he is my father. It would be like, yeah, Grim Anders would be the... Rob's got it there. Pas Pasión de la Pasión. <laughs> what a great name for a game. <laughs> is that the Passion of the Passions? Because, mm -hmm. you know, like all, all, all American shows, like soaps are like, as the world turns, and mm -hmm. those among us. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's cool. Okay. So, Michael. Yes. I'm going to throw this one to you. 
hello, that's me, yes. Because it's you don't have to choose. It's literally just this one question. Uh -huh. um, what's the most prominent physical feature of our land? And what virtue does it metaphorically represent? So I'm going to erase this here. Uh, and you can just start drawing from that point. All right. So, um, so I am actually going to be drawing on my phone, which is going to be an intriguing experience. So we'll see how that goes. Um, okay. So I, and this is where my Michael's legendary drawing happens. I'm going to say a craggy mountain in the center of our strange and wonderful society covered in cloud like so okay just at the top and it represents it represents perseverance at the top of it like very few have managed to climb uh can i name it uh, I, know, yeah. I, I know i can't name characters but i can name this All right. yeah i guess so yeah uh, so I will name this. Uh, so the the less we give, the better, apparently, because it gives us space to build out later on. Okay, so, so I'm just going to I'm going to call it uh, Mount Dolora. Mount Mount Dolores. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah. And so, it. what virtue does it metaphorically? Oh yeah, perseverance. Per okay. Perseverance. So it's like it's like those who manage to get to the top of it, <clears throat> they are okay. sort of like they are they are prized. Um, okay, so now I am being presented with two questions, and I have to pick one. Um, one is our spiritual beliefs promise prosperity. What w must we do to become prosperous? What is taboo? The other one is what do parents warn our children about at bedtime? And what celebration is tied to that fear? What a lovely question. Yes. So um, so I'm going to turn to the story cubes just to get my head going. And I'm going to take the voyages set, I think. Uh, yeah. So I'm just coloring in my clouds. Because you know what uh, Oh, what was that one? OK. So. Um, there are so I'm, I'm looking at some of the icons here and uh, I'm going to move see I can't I can't interact with your map that's the problem um, can't you? no as in I can move it but you won't see it moving ah, okay. um, <clears throat> so the thing that catches my eye is this. So I think there are giant mammoths uh -huh. that walk this land, and they are in the east. So I'm going to just move over this way. Um, and it's kind of like a, let me see, the plains, and they are giant tusked creatures. Let's move over a wee bit so folks can see. There you go. Um, How's that showing up? Uh, it's not too bad. So they're kind of... Um, going to make them kind of dragon-esque, I think. Uh, I like this, this thing is either <laughs> zoom all the way out or zoom all the way in, and there is yeah. no <laughs> there is no in-between. Um. So there's kind of like herds of them. So I'm just going to draw a couple more. And they, I think, um, they warned the children about them basically kind of destroying the stories of the past, I think, where they have literally just, they have come through and they just like raise cities to the ground because I'm going to draw like uh, like this is how big they are. They are. 
okay? And they will literally just like flatten the city. Uh -huh. um, so the celebration is, um, what celebration is tied to that fear? Um, oh, 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 oh. So actually it is, I'm looking at one of the things here and it's uh, water. So it's like a rising tide. So I'm gonna say there's kind of like an ocean around here that kind of cuts them off. Uh -huh. um, so it's over to your left. So kind of heading a bit west. Um, and that is the, um, the Sarcona uh, Sea. And it basically acts as a barrier. So when the when the um, the glaciers melt and the and the ocean rises, it's a cause for celebration because there's a period of time where they are safe from the um, what am I going to call them? Uh, Gigantophants. <laughs> Thank you for the advice, Ken. Yeah, hitting F11 makes it big screen, so mm -hmm. we can see a little bit more. That's better. Okay. So Gigantifants. Gigantifants. Um, so choose one of these questions, Michael. Death and taxes are the only constants in life. Why? Who do we pay taxes to? Or name one group that is traditionally wealthy in our society. Name another who has supplanted them recently. Um, okay, let's, let's do the death and taxes one. Uh, taxes are paid, fealty is given to uh, a group known as the Viziers. Okay. So let's see if I can draw them. Now, where will I put them? Well, I guess they're going to be between the mountain and the sea because this is the safe place. Mm -hmm. uh, so and this is where Michael's horrifying drawing skills come into play. Let's go. Uh, just... Yeah, I mean, I should probably do this more of a land border, but hey, maybe I will. So. Such beautiful drawing, such beautiful art. And they are mean, mean boys, because of course, a hood, they need a hood. <laughs> Uh, actually, there's color on this, isn't there? There you go. Ah, yeah, nice red, there you go. We'll give them some nice blood red hood action uh, and a cape. It wraps around them like so. Okay. So, yeah, the Viziers. Viziers. Okay. Uh, God, this, this, my art is worse than it was <laughs> doing doing Delve last week. Um. Okay, so that's who we pay taxes to the viziers. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. So my next question is. What is the price of magic and who usually wields it? Or what new technology can be found in every home and what members of society has it displaced? Okay. Uh, Ken has gone uh, to call my one Little Red Robin Hood. Hmm. Thanks. Um, so what's the price of magic? Who... So do we want magic in the world or are we going to go for... I, I will leave this entirely to you. Um, whenever I'm doing a story thing, I know that I am a freaking terror for always leaning it more of a sci-fi kind of vibe. 
So yeah. I, I am happy to take it any route you want to go. Down. See, I, see, I would tend to go the magic route. So that's why I'm thinking I should go the other way. All right, let's let uh, chat decide. Chat, this side. Chat, this side. Do you want the first person to post magic or technology? Go. Let's see what we get. Do, 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 do. I'm really glad. I'm not going to listen to them anyway. All right. Tech. Yay. You've supported yeah. my view, so we get that. You've enabled Rory. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to just, I think I'll make a note kind of off to the side here because it's not really in a home. Um, what new technology? I'm going to roll my story to you again. Okay. Let's go over to the other. Um, So, um, please be mirror universe. Please be mirror universe. Please be mirror universe. <laughs> um, it is. Um, so this did grab my attention. The kind of treasure chest, uh -huh. um, and I was thinking of it almost like a. Um, So I'm going to say essentially a holographic theater. So you open the box and it collapses and it kind of like projects a performance. Um, oh, I like the late 80s, early 90s TV series Wild Palms starring well, James Belushi. Is that what that was? Uh, yeah, so it was like um, it, it, the, it was a weird sort of like dystopian technology type thing and uh, this company was pushing essentially holographic tv yeah okay so that's a really terrible uh of a box um but yeah it's i've did it up a little bit higher <laughs> it's so bad uh it's a hollow theater uh -huh. and it's this displaced um the Members of society, I think it's displaced local, um, because I, I the local actors' guilds, uh -huh. um, who yeah, have been because a lot of this is done through kind of I think 3D uh animation as well, okay, okay. So there are four questions answered. Okay, so we have, you know, a, a, we have a bit of a setting. It's mm -hmm. good to go. Um, so, okay, so it says starting the acts. Um, three acts is where we'll tell most of the story. Each act has the same structure, a historian phase. Uh, we'll have two story rounds um, and a biographer phase. Uh, da, 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 and we'll explain each one as we go. Here's some guiding principles. Name places, not people. Uh, refer uh -huh. to the hero, companions, and people by their archetype or title. Name places evocatively. Truth is relative. Events are interpreted through the lens of the teller. So we can basically tell contradictory information. Okay. As part of our story. Um, so we all have our own biases, points of reference, and prejudices, making all of us unreliable narrators. Uh, disagree by making up your own facts. So avoid trying to reach for consensus. Use your role to show your different points of view. Okay. So act one is the hero's genesis. Um, all heroes start somewhere. What is this hero's origin? Uh, so in this act, we're going to be introducing the hero. Now's the chance to establish existing institutions and cultural norms of the society that spark the need for a hero. Uh, the historian phase. Um, so... I'm looking at this handy dandy reference card uh -huh. for each of the roles. And it says the historian phase plants thematic events and situations into the world at the beginning of an act. Begin the phase by drawing one theme card, which I'll do in just a minute, uh, that's shared by all players. Each player is going to take a turn describing historical events based off of the theme card. Each player draws an interpretation of their description on the map as they take their turn. Uh -huh. Choose a part of the map and briefly describe events happening there then draw a simple representation of the event on the map. Choose different areas of the map from other historians. Go somewhere where the hero or the companion are not present. 
uh, going strictly in order is not necessary. Those ideas come to you. The phase ends when everyone has gone once. Okay. Okay. Um, so because we're again because we're playing two player, this is really designed for three to four four players. Uh -huh. um, so the stuff will be less, or we can just kind of put more into what we're saying as well. Um, okay. Do you want to flip back to the top down camera? Okay. So yep. just for the first act, I had kind of set this up. Um, so we're going to draw one theme card and reveal it, and that's the one we're going to be referencing. Okay. Debt. Once a substantial debt was overdue, or once collecting a small debt brought something of great price to ruin. Hmm. Okay. Also, hello, Alex. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, okay. I mean, the 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 most logical thing would be because we have this taxed society. The debts thing could be mm -hmm. quite a logical thing to go. Uh, so, what's the first bit again? So, say say the the top half of the yeah. So, once a substantial debt was overdue. Okay. Uh, so it could be a rich, a rich family who have made their money but have like not paid the viziers, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Okay, yeah. so I guess I, you just I guess mark I gotta, on the map. I guess I gotta draw that then. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna represent said rich family by. Going to draw a uh, significantly lovely mansion with uh, all manner of towers and stuff and windows and there at the uh, the base of Mount Dolores, mm -hmm. Dolores, Dolorosa, Dolorosa. That's the one. The sad, the sad word. Um, Okay, so yeah, this family uh, have, for the longest time, managed to wheedle their way out of paying taxes, and now the viziers have come to collect. Okay, so I need to come up with something then as well um, of that debt cut. So once collecting a small debt brought something of great price to ruin. Um, Huh. Okay. I'm going to say that um, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it out. So it's to do with I'm gonna say there like there is also sorcery in this world. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm looking at once collecting a small debt brought something of great price to ruin. And um, I think there were like the guardians of the Sarcosa Sea who would hold off the uh, Gigantifence. Uh -huh. it, it's that kind of um, Pied Piper thing where they refuse to, I think the Viziers refuse to pay them. At one point, they became complacent, mm -hmm. and they said, "Well, you're not really protecting them because they're not really crossing the water." And and the sorcerers were like, "No, we were, were we were the ones actually doing it." Yeah. Um, and so, um, in terms of trying to get paid, so in terms of collecting that debt, um, and their failure to do it, <clears throat> they basically um, let the guard down, and the gigantophants ruined something. So. I'm going to mark, there was like these uh, kind of magical um, kind of guard posts okay. along the way. And they, 
So I'm gonna say there was another town, right? Uh, actually, I know there was a ship. Um, so there's a, a wreckage of a ship here. And it is the, um, <laughs> this is such a cheat. The Vassar Shredder. And it contained, uh, I'm not gonna say what it was, but an epic treasure. Uh -huh. And it was destroyed <clears throat> um, because the sorcerers basically um, let down the guard, the Gigantophants trampled it. Uh, it was caught at sea uh -huh. and it was destroyed by the Gigantophants. And there's some incredible um, treasure or power that's been lost as a result of it. Okay. Well, that sounds good. I'd, I'd love to know how the Gigantophants destroyed a ship. Have you, have you seen the size of them? Yeah, but. There's, there's also the water. Yeah, I think it was when the, the water was receding. Oh, okay. All right, I will allow so it. Maybe <laughs> it was like um, was on the ground. Okay, I will allow it. As okay. the arbiter of the arbiter of a story, apparently. Yeah. All right, yeah, that just doesn't make sense. Out of all the things that has been said tonight, that's the thing that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um. Okay, so that's it. Um, each player takes a turn describing a historical event inspired by the theme. Um, each player draws an interpretation, which we've done. When playing the historian, choose a part of the map and briefly describe events happening there. Then draw a simple representation of the event onto the map. Going strictly in order is not necessary. Yeah, we've done that. Okay, so story rounds. In each round, each player will take a turn as one of their roles. The cartographer, which we're kind of we're doing it, we're actually carrying it. Um, uh -huh. We're taking that role as we're doing the other ones. Um, a companion, a witness, and a lore keeper. Okay. At the end of the round, the roles rotate. So as we said, it'll go in that sequence. So mm -hmm. one person will be the companion, uh, then the other player will be the lore keeper, then the first player will be the um sorry, the witness, then the first player will be the lore keeper. And then we'll rotate and do that again a second time. Um da, da, da. yes. And um, we're only gonna do that twice because it's a two player game. Mm -hmm. Um so at the beginning of Act 1's first story round, roles are distributed. Uh, would you like to be the first companion? Uh, actually, I would I, I would like to, to seed it over, okay. if that's OK. Yeah, no, that's fine. So one player will volunteer to be the cartographer, uh, which will be the same role. And from that okay. person, the other three roles of companion, witness, and lorekeeper are distributed clockwise. Uh, so we know we're going backwards and forwards because there's only two of uh us. -huh. The rules, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so set it for companion cards face up. So if we switch back to uh, my, oh, there I think go. we hit, we both hit it at the same time. Exactly. Okay. Same time. Um, so I'm just going to set this aside. So this is kind of what we're looking at. Okay, so we're going to flip over four cards, uh -huh. four companion cards. So we've got the bard. Oh, am I going to leave, am I gonna have to leave that for you, Michael? Um, so most of your stories are lies. <laughs> Did you even meet the hero? <laughs> uh, ally, uh, you fought at the hero's side. What did you accomplish? And patron, you supported the hero because you saw potential. What did you see in the hero? And mercenary, when you met the hero, you fought for coin, but you would later find a greater purpose. Okay. okay. So, um, so start play with the cartographer. Um, so generally... The role of the cartographer, I'll just read it quickly, is I get to add, edit, curate, and manufacture the subjective truth of the map. So there is an opportunity at the beginning of the round to kind of tweak things on the map. Okay. Uh, pointing out uh, some recent or relevant events in the last round, make adjustments to the map as you see fit. Um, for the first round, you can refer to the historian phase. Um, after this, the companion begins their turn. So I don't think there's anything we need to change on the map. Uh, everything's pretty clear. Oh, did you have a name? So uh, this is kind of being deleted. So this was meant... Uh, Dolorosa. 
which I think is, Dola. is Spanish. Dolo, D-O-L-O. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's Spanish for sadness. And what was the name of the 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 kind of city? Oh, the fa the family that we got here. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to cop out and just say that it's called the city. There well, is what's only the, one what's city. The, what's the family? And just add stronghold or something to that. Oh, um, Cabot, C A B O T. Yeah, the Cabot okay. stronghold. Okay, do you want me to just write that? Okay. Uh, Donorosa equals painful. I mean, if you're climbing up a giant mountain, then yes, it's going to be painful. And these are just called the viziers? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Grand. So that's kind of that role, cleaning things up. Um, so the companion, uh, I need to tell the story. So I'm looking for the card here. Companion. Draw two theme cards and pick one to define your story. Discard okay. the other one. Choose one of the companion cards you've available to you and draw a face card from the top of the stack. With those three elements, tell a story about this companion and how they intersect with the hero. Tell the story from the first person. At the end of the round, pass this card to the left to the witness. Okay. So I kind of pre-drew two sets of cards to look at, oh. so I'll just flip this one. So favor, once a favor was bestowed, with strings attached or guidance once an unlikely guide offered assistance. Hmm. So would you get one of them and I get the other? Yeah. Or... Okay. No, so I'm going to pick one and then you'll get two to pick from. Okay, I see. And I'm going to pick one of these four and then it'll get refreshed to four for you. Uh -huh. Um. So... I'm just going to make my life hard. I'm going to be a patron. Right, so I'll actually do it this way, I think. So I'll put this here. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to draw a face card to indicate what I look like. I mean, I'm getting I'm, I'm getting a moneyed vibe off of that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So... I'm a patron, uh, and uh, so once a favor was bestowed with strings attached on the hero. Um, so I come from the land beyond the giant defense, uh, which is uh, the Dao. way over here uh -huh. uh, and it is a well there's another picture it's heavily forested um and i think we've suffered um we've suffered greatly at the hands of the gigantic fence uh -huh. as well and i was sent in search of finding aid um, beyond the Sarkona Sea, Sarkona Sea, because we had heard tell of um, kind of valiant heroes that could be relied upon, uh -huh. um, and so whilst um, so I support a hero because you saw potential. Yes. Yeah, so um, when I first met the hero, um, they were. A, uh, a struggling performer who had been had suffered at the hands of uh, you know this new technology that had been introduced to the land uh -huh. um, and had fallen upon hard days um, but I saw in them a they used to do kind of like street tricks that would combine um, like elements of magic mixed with um, technology. 
as okay. well. Um, so th they would use little gadgets, um, but infuse them with um, magic and get them to operate in ways that was beyond my ken um, and what was potential, you know, what was possible within our land. So um, I, they, they were struggling and I, um, yeah, um, I think our, um, our people have the ability to kind of see into the hearts of others. And we saw, uh, when I saw uh, who we come to know as the hero, um, there was an incredible strength within them. And so we offered, um, I offered to, uh, I basically handed over a bag of money to them straight away and said, um, here, you know, um, this should help ease your suffering. Um, but when you're called upon, you must prioritize um, my request above all else. Uh -huh. um, all of the other demands that are placed upon you will uh, must fall away and you must travel to Lodell um, and be our hero in our time of need. When you are called upon. Yeah. Okay. That's the requirement of once a favor was bestowed with strings attached. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, here's a bunch of money. And when I clap, you come. When I mm -hmm. say jump, you say how I. Um, yes. And we parted that day. Um, and it was a while before I heard from them again. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is our, that is our patron. Yep, so that one's kind of taken. Okay, uh -huh. so I'm going to just maybe pull that one uh, down because we're going to kind of use these, refer back to these. So you get an extra one. Weep. Rival and ally or mercenary. Uh, what's the um, rival say? So the rival says, you and the hero are rivals. What fuels your feud? Okay, I and mean, um, the two, th well, just so you know, the two themes are that you get to choose from are glory and futility. Uh -huh. So glory says, once an honorable soul fell to lowly predicaments, or once a journey began in pursuit of greatness. Futility is, once a great relic was lost after long effort, or once a soldier uh, protested a doomed charge. Well, you can take that futility card and throw it on the discard pile because this is going to be a tale of bardic glory because y'all know that's the way it is. I, a humble bard, a humble child, okay. but with a prodigious talent for music. My family, 17 brothers and sisters, with barely a scrap of food, Let's have a look at this. Do you want to see what you look like? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's like K-pop bird. Right, okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, I, in a bit... Uh, oh, 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 sorry. Hang oh. on. We're, we're losing our track, actually. Sorry. So, I did um, my companion phase. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to park this for the moment. God damn it, I was on a roll. I know. <laughs> Uh, right. You need so you need to do the witness phase. Right? Okay. So this is going so to be your job. This is, the, this is the stuff that's happening outside of the current no map. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to look to a part of the map where the hero, or the, the last companion, is not. Okay. Um, so let me. You know, I I feel like I should add a town that I traveled to. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say I traveled south here to um, it's kind of oh, I'm going to say on the shores here and it's kind of more like a tented uh, camp mm -hmm. um, though hang on this is meant to be science fiction isn't it so it should be technology but there, then there is also trace magic sort yeah. of vibe so it's like a kind of a caravan and I'm going to call this um Drasta. Right. Okay. 
So that's where I encountered the hero. All right. All right. So um, you take some previous event, per perhaps from the historian round, and describe how it moves forward. Um, you don't need to tell the whole story, just share some facts. So at the end of the round, pass this card to the left. Yeah. So you're kind of saying, meanwhile, something's going on. Um, OK, I don't know if this is going to work, but um, to the far north, or well, to the relatively far north. So the, I think the point is you're going to take something that's already been introduced. Oh, OK. That's my impression from it. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so how about this? Uh, I've just got to scroll over to the right bit. Um, the walled port. To the, got to always make sure it's right to the east of the Sarcona Sea. Um, which is called Sarco uh, Sarconid. Uh, receives news of the the destruction of the of the Vasa Treader, mm -hmm. uh, and knowing that the epic treasure has been lost, uh, goes into total shutdown. So okay. nobody in, nobody out. Okay, that does the trick. Okay, so then it's going to come back to me as the lore keeper. Uh -huh. Um, so briefly describe a piece of lore that reflects some of the culture of the realm. Some examples might be songs, poetry, a mural, a fable, some theater, some slang, a myth, a cultural movement, games, or sports. At the end of the round, pass this card to the left. Um, so... Um, so... And that looks more like a basket. Okay. So I think um, so. I'm going to go that way. Um, so I think there's um, a tale that uh, it's kind of, is it fable uh, or myth that tells of a time when the Gigantophants had um, crossed the sea and push the the people of this land actually we need to give this land a name um i'm gonna say philalia uh, philalia uh -huh. so at, um yeah it's just kind of written down lower um so when the gigantophants had uh, crossed the sea and pushed the people of um, Plalia kind of right back towards uh, Mount Dolorosa. And they um, were all gathered um, and climbing you know, up, the, up the mountain um, and the Gigantfants were approaching and the myth um, what does the myth say? It uh, talks of um, a time when the because of the the people at the time fought so valiantly and defended the children against the gigantophants that the mountain actually opened up uh -huh. um, and gave them refuge and it the mountain spoke to them and essentially um, applauded um, the people for their kind of resilience and, and perseverance in the face of this overwhelming 
uh, challenge. I see what you've done there. I gotcha. Um, so, so the story is in Flalia's time of need, that entryway will reopen uh -huh. and provide shelter to the people of the land. And let's give it a name, that doorway. Um, so that is the... Um, uh, the... Uh, oh man, my brain has just like done this complete meltdown. Um, doorway to um i'm gonna say tomorrow actually okay. because it bought them time because without that doorway there would have been no tomorrow uh -huh. okay um so now we go back All right so that's essentially one story round completed that's really uh -huh. where the way it's broken up so we're going to go back, and now you get to be. We kind of flip the opposite way. So you get to be the cart, the companion. Uh -huh. I will be the witness. You will be the lore keeper. Okay. So let me tell you about my story as a bard, born, of course, in the walled port of Sarconid. I, with my seventeen brothers and sisters, needed to find a way to support them, and knew that the only way. The only way, Rory, would be to go where the money is, to find myself a patron. So, the Castilion of Cabot, at the foot of Mount Dolorosa, is where I first met the hero, where I first stumbled into them, as I was trying to catch the attention in a in a local local tavern, singing songs for hurled coins and one of those coins was hurled by the very generous hero and it hit me square in the freaking eyes <laughs> and as i persevered and continued to to sing my song to a finish when it was complete the hero walked up to me and shook me warmly by the hand and said you have something about you you have a special way and that is where I first met the hero. So which bit of the glory were you covering? So the, once an honorable soul fell the, or once a journey began in pursuit of greatness? Journey began in, in pursuit of greatness. I want to be the biggest bard across all of these lands. I want to be known so I can make that money send it back to uh my, my 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 rapidly increasing family back in the walled port of sarconid okay uh okay doke uh so then as a witness i gotta nudge other events forward uh -huh. so you were in cabot Toss a coin to your witcher. Well, not. Um, <laughs> so, I would say... Hmm. So oh, it's a running, running theme with perseverance. I got knocked in the head with a coin, and I persevered with the song. There you go. Um, so, I... Think we got to do something with the viziers. Um, uh -huh. They have. I think a war has broken out between them and the sorcerers. Um. So they are. Um. They're raising an army. And sending them out this way. Okay. So, uh, uh, 
Um, and actually, we can have. Uh, there's actually going to be like their guns. Uh, are we, do we have laser guns? I think we'll have laser guns. Um, well, you're going to say if it's going to have technology, yeah, so it's kind of like science versus magic. Um, so okay, maybe not laser guns, but they have essentially the equivalent of a kind of a tank type uh, weapon. Um, and they're heading out to basically destroy the um, well, let's say they destroyed one of them actually so um, yeah they, the take, visitors, taking, taking down their defenses while they can taking down one of them um, which essentially breaks the chain uh, Ken, I think you'll find you're talking about Metal Zoic. <laughs> uh, Google that one. Epic, epic story. So are, um, these like, are these like Christmas lights? Like if one in the middle of them isn't working, the whole lot drops? Uh, yeah. They're kind of, you know, like, um, actually the way a lot of coastal defenses, they would have had those... Um, they would have been lights essentially to notify, you know, send a message to the next one. Uh -huh. But in this case, it's actually magical energy that would have created a shield, I guess, like in uh, what Star Wars episode one, where they have the big uh -huh. kind of bubble wall. Just I was thinking, that's a design yeah. flaw. <laughs> well, that's they also killed it. Exploited. They also destroyed the backup one. Well, they're sorcerers. They think, you know, they have the power. Uh -huh. Science has gotten the better of them. Okay. So then uh, you get to be, so that was the witness, you get to be the lore keeper, which is where uh, you get to describe a piece of lore that reflects some of the culture of the realm. A song, poetry, mural, fable, theater, slang, myth, cultural movements, games, or sports. Uh, okay. Exactly. How could it fail? Hubris, I think you'll find. Hubris, which is still a good name for a cat. Um, Michael might be beaten by science. Is this a Seven Wonders Doodle RPG? I mean, we'll speak to Antoine. We'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. We'll make it happen. Um, okay. I am going to, I'm going to, obviously, not as the bard, but I'd like to tell you about a little bit about a, uh, a song that's been passed down through the generations. The ode of... Ob, o -B -E. The Ode to uh, Ob. The Ode of Ob. A okay. tragic yet heroic tale of the first great hero of this land uh, whose weapon, a large stone club, was hewn from the rocks of Mount Dolorosa and who stood up was the first one to fight back the what did you call them? Gigantophants. Uh, Gigantophants. Um, in a time when the Sarcona Sea ran dry and it's 48 verses long and everybody knows the first two verses and the last one. It's the, the, the middle 45 are kind of irrelevant but it's like, you know. It's when you, you mutter, it's like me trying to sing the Irish national anthem. Yeah. You get the first line. Gina the <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's very much like that. It's like, it's legendary. Everybody knows it, but nobody really knows it mm -hmm. apart from apart from the opening bits. So, the oh, Ode of Obey. Oh, so it tells of a sword. Uh, a legendary club. I'm going to go for. Club. Okay. All right. So do, do I you want to mark that somewhere? Yeah. Uh, let's. So I'm kind of either collecting things up on top. Is one way. Yeah. If it doesn't have a, a, a place. Um. I just got to get to. But the... also, if there's a key location that's mentioned in it, then you might mark that on the map. Uh, well, it was it was hewn from from the from the mountain, so. How about I put it over 
there. So it, it's really difficult doing it on the phone because it's like, okay, zooming in, zooming out. And now everything has disappeared. So that's not so great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my access is completely gone. So what I'm going to do is draw it using my mouse. Do you want me, do you want me to? No, so give me, let, let me give it a shot on the mouse. And see if uh, see how my creation skills will go. Uh, okay, so Y and so if you uh, click okay. the the line one again, because you're going to. You're drawing with an arrow at the moment. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, line. Yes. line. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, a huge. No. Pen is what I want. That's it. Pen. So a huge stone club. Oh, man. Drawing on. It's easy. Color it in, la 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 la. <laughs> like so. Uh, and this is uh, the club. Of Obe, OBE, hewn from the rocks. Oh, how about this? It was it was the it was the um, it was the former summit. He climbed to the top, ripped it off. Okay. So yeah, so it's the former summit, and it's just like boom, done. Okay, and um, I think can we move your? I wonder if we can move your. Wah! What the hell? Sorry, it's sorry. Pulling out old stuff. Uh, Ken, Michael did do the homework with the tablet. Unfortunately, it just won't work. <laughs> so, sad face. Okay. Um, so that's the end of... Uh, if we go back up, if you want to show people, because I know some people came in late, mm -hmm. you want to show them the kind of overview for the game. Okay, so if I do this... And then I can zoom. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. So this is what we're working with. Okay. So we've just finished Act One, the Heroes Genesis. All right. Um, <laughs> it's an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so we'll speed it up. Um, so we do the heroes rise. Um, so this is where we got to get epic, and then the heroes apex, which will be their fall. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, I'm gonna just set that aside. Okay, so while you're doing that, I will. Zoom out a little and, and show folks our our full glorious creation thus far. So of course, then we have the uh, the hollow the uh, the new technology that is sweeping the nation, sweeping the lands. And then, as we go a little bit further down, we have the center Mount Dolorosa. Mountain of Pain, containing the doorway of tomorrow and where the legendary cub of Obe was was hewn from the very top above the clouds. Um, so I will say, this is the thing about the game, I think, and the structure and the stuff that's missing. I don't think we've set, like, in terms of storytelling, we haven't set up Act 1. That's, like, we haven't got the kind of impending threat and I think the, the sense of something shifting at this point. Uh -huh. um, so I think we'll need to kind of try and combine that into our stories for Act 2. 
Um, so with Act Two, um, the heroes emerged and is entering in early conflicts, heroic acts. Now is a good time to introduce some growing threats that will see the world set the world into chaos for Act Three. Okay. Um, play at Act Two the same way as Act One. At the end of Act Two, each player will have a total of two companions. That is not true because we are playing the duet version of the game, which means um, in Act Two you have the option to choose a new companion card from those available, so we can kind of change our role. Uh -huh. um, so it's still the same face. It's it's uh, I uh, honestly don't quite get it. So we'll play it to try and figure it out. Um, so in Act 2 you have the option to choose a new companion card from those available reflecting a change in your companion while portraying the same character so you would shift from being just known as the bard to say becoming uh -huh. a rival um, so that could be interesting actually um, so it's, it's like the evolution of the character yeah or you could just continue the story of that character if you want okay. I mean Alex makes a point a dodgy magic shield and a giant horde of Gigantic fan sounds a bit threaty to me. So, you know, know we've but got some problems going I, on. But the hero, I, I don't feel like the hero has kind of done anything heroic at this uh -huh. to, to mark them as a hero. It's just we've kind of gone, you've got potential. Um, yes. Okay. So we'll still set up the opening theme for the act. We'll do that bit as the historians to create kind of new events that are going on. Uh -huh. Um, so if we do that, and then we uh, you'll be going first. Okay. And yeah, you'll get to decide then what do you want to change. Um, I think you'll get a new theme. Yeah, so you'll get to draw the two themes, pick one, and that's what the theme will be. And you can choose if you want to change the role of your companion. Uh -huh. Okay. So if we switch back to these, and I'm going to reveal a theme card um, for Act 2. Uh-huh. Conquest. Once an invader from far came into our land, or once our banners were raised in foreign lands. Hmm. So the land. So we got Falalia is to the west, and Lodol is to the east. Yeah. So those are separate yeah. lands. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think. Um, I guess the land in between where the gigantophants exist because uh -huh. it's it's kind of I picture it like a kind of desert type place, but okay. uh, maybe it's got its own its own title. No, I mean I I can, I can have I, I I can I can get behind that because like you've got the port at the top as well, which mm -hmm. you could have that as it, it can only survive because of its you know its access to the water. So. Mm -hmm. Anytime the water does go away, you know that's going to cause problems for the for the port as well. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we can do it in no particular order, uh, but it's once an invader from afar came into our land, um, or once our banners were raised in foreign lands, and it should kind of feed in, I think, to the increasing. Um, sense of threat in Act 2? Uh, okay, well, maybe it could be something along the lines of a long time ago, Falalia ruled over Lodel, but then this sort of deserty section, you know, the sand started swooping in from the north, and with it came the Gigantophants. Uh, and eventually... Like, well, actually, it could be sort of like Falalia was like this whole area on both sides of the sea. Mm -hmm. So the banners were over here, but then as the as the sands came in, it split them off. The Gigantophan split them off, and Lodel sort of became its own independent state, an offshoot of Falalia. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to? Um, yeah, I don't think we need to necessarily mark. That in any way. Well, I know. Uh, do. Uh, former. Uh, Falalian Republic of Lodel. <laughs> mm. 
There we go. The story has been told. Another layer added to the onion. Well, I just told us something. Yep. Um, so I am going to say um, in the night sky, a large. Um, uh, so whenever I lean on my pad, it triggers the zoom on this thing. Oh, um, fun. So I'm going to go up here. In the night sky, uh, it's there was essentially a spaceship that came to so an alien uh -huh. invader, a visitor from afar. Um, we've. Uh, I just switch back to that, um, and it they came. They were the ones who basically brought technology to the land, which gave uh, Philalia a kind of an unfair advantage, or has basically introduced the technology to them. Uh -huh. um, so once an invader from afar came into a land, so yeah, so. Um, and these are um, they're essentially traders T or A D E R uh -huh. um, who have come down and they yeah they brought a lot of the kind of they created this huge leap in technology uh, within the land and it's never been made clear why they didn't just like wipe everyone out because they're like, they were just so far advanced, but they, they uh -huh. seem to have settled and intermingled and they are, so they're not really tied to the myth of the mountain or anything. Um, but I think we're going to call them the, um, so it's, a, it's 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 a, another piece of the mythology, like of the of the the world. Uh, yeah. The Zonanis, I think. Oh no, Zonans. So that's their kind of race, and they're shorter than the the people of Flalia. Uh huh. Um. Yes, so yeah, they're definitely invaders, as in if they chose to, they could just turn around and wipe everyone out, but they just they haven't. It's like an instant win. Okay. Uh, okay. Critical 20s all the way. Mm -hmm. um, so then we will begin the act. Right, and we'll begin with the well, cartographer Michael, is there anything you want to check on the map? Um, no, no, no. I think we're good. Okay. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I'll let you go first as a companion, just so we kind of, you're kind of going into it first. And you will pick between. So you've got your character, which is the bard. Um, uh -huh. I'm going to switch back. Um, so. What I'm assuming is you take one of these new themes that's going to uh -huh. sit, essentially, I'll just sit it on top of that one. And then you can choose if you want the bard to change their change from being a bard uh -huh. to their relationship now being one of a spy, an ally, a mercenary, or a rival. Uh -huh. But it's essentially this person. Okay. So... So they they are no longer a bard. They are now. So the simplest way is you can keep them as the bard, uh -huh. and I think you just change the theme. Uh -huh. And if you want, you can shift their role. Um, you know their status as companion. Okay. I mean, I, okay. So actually, I would like to think. Uh, yeah. Okay. So starting off with the bard's original story. Um, what with the okay, so what with the the growth of the holothere and all that sort of stuff? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of money we have in live in, in in live action, so it's time to go where the money is and become a mercenary. Okay, 
Um, so, and then the themes you get to pick are um, captivity, once a distant fortress held a condemned soul, uh -huh. or patience, once knowledge was revealed after a great wait. Okay, so I'm going to go for the captivity one. Mm -hmm. um, while I, while I, as a barn, was not incredibly successful, I did get access to you know the the people in the Castillon of uh, of Cabot, and they informed me that one of their number, one of their own sons, was held in captivity in a in a place far away, a place I knew. My own hometown, the walled port of Sakhalin. Um and because I had that information, because I knew what the place was like, I, you know, I could get there, and it would be a big journey. I knew that it'd be able to. They would pay me greatly if I could spring their beloved son from the incarceration they found themselves in. Okay, do you want to tell more of that? I'm trying to think about how to turn it into like the... Okay, so, all right, so the... So we're trying to sort of like draw it in so the hero is now getting more involved in doing heroic things. Mm -hmm. So knowing that I couldn't do this on my own, I needed some beefy backup because I, a mere spindly bard, would not be able to handle if things went south. Uh, I, I called upon the one person I knew, the 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 beef himself, the armor, the 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 hero of the hour, and the mission was the mission was set as the hero and the now mercenary go off to try and uh, yeah le beef we're going to call him um, <laughs> no no because the hero doesn't have a name mm -hmm. um, so yeah the hero and the bard now mercenary return to the uh, the bard's hometown to to spring this uh, spring this incarcerated son in an act of glorious heroism. Okay. I want to hear how you did it. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want me to do that, I can go. I can make yeah. up some absolute crap on the top of my head. Okay. All right. So picture it. Sicily, 1938. No, that's the Golden Girls. Um, returning to my hometown, the glorious hometown of Sarconid. Obviously, it's like I said earlier. Everything that the bard says is lies, yeah? Mm -hmm. that's, that's on the card. So on returning to Sarkonid, I uh, managed to, by whispering in a few of the right people's ears, convince everybody that I was incredibly successful all around my travels and have made, you know, made a good name for myself. With that, I managed to gain myself an audience with uh, the Sarkonid's high family and on gaining access to their uh, their own keep inside in the center of the city of Sarkonid, uh, I of course needed to bring my valet, the hero in disguise, let's see, uh, who while I was performing and just dazzling, dazzling the high family with my talents, uh, the hero, who was not allowed in for the performance because commoners are not allowed into uh, the the central room, uh, the central chamber de musique, as it were. Uh, the uh, hero managed to slip the attention of the guards and work their way through while I was performing the previously mentioned forty-seven verse uh, ode of Obe. See, I can bring this stuff around. Yeah. I can make it go. So, <laughs> while performing the forty-seven, uh, the forty-seventh and final verse, uh, I hear a whistle outside of the window of the Chambre de Musique, uh, the predetermined code that the the boy had been sprung, and it was time for us, the mercenary bard of legend and the hero, to make our way back to the uh, the Castillon of Cabot. There you go. That's a, that's okay. a story. Fuck <laughs> <laughs>
just like drawing it out. Okay, yeah. so um, the lore keeper. No, oh. mm -hmm. uh, so then I, I need to be the witness. Uh, so uh, just going back up the map. I need to look at somewhere where you're not and develop the story. Okay, so that part of the story took place mainly up in the walled port, yeah? Mm -hmm. So something anywhere far away from there. Um, yeah, so I think... I think um, I'm just telling like my side story here. I think in response to um, the attack on the the sorcerer's um, kind of protection, uh -huh. um, and so as we are dealing with, man, every time I hit zoom, it just goes full on. Yeah, it, it's kind of a weird one. Um, right, so we're, we're here in this kind of area. Yeah, I think I'm gonna say because we said something was lost, wasn't it earlier on? Yeah, there's the, uh, the the mythic epical, <laughs> mythical yes. epic rather not epical uh, treasure that went down with the uh, Vasa Treader. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the. Uh, So I'm going to say the ruler. So here's a question, because I've never actually come across this before. So we have a king and a queen, which are assumed to be masculine and feminine. What is a ruler who would go be identify as neither? A non-binary ruler. Uh, well, hey, this is our universe. We can make up whatever... So yeah. Ah, oh, they could be a Themperer. I was thinking of a Keen. <laughs> Themperer a Keen. A Queen. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, I I, I, I I don't know, man. I might have to put my foot down for this. I think I think Themperer might be the way to go because you know. Well, yeah, okay. I was gonna make it up something else. So I'm gonna say the Themperer. Yeah, the Themperer of uh Lodell. Um, they have made a they stuck a bargain with the sorcerers because um, I think they have access to kind of like a lot of uh, kind of resources over to uh -huh. the east um, so kind of following the attack the sorcerers basically have abandoned uh, Philalia and have moved and have begun construction on a networked defense system. There. Okay. There you go. A better version 2.0. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to. Uh, so it's kind of under construction, but it's kind of like kind of webs of. to try and uh, prevent. So I'm kind of drawing over to the other side. Okay. Uh, to the east. Let me screw it down. East is the other way. Over that way. Okay. Oh, like there. a mesh network. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I kind of <laughs> it's not, it's not quite finished. The stream got way more interesting when I turned the sound back on. Says so like, Well, <laughs> <laughs> that would help. A little bit. Uh, so they should be kind of like magical. Look, they're magical lines. Ooh. It looks like it looks like I'm just crossing out my mistakes. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So they base the uh, sorcerers have fallen back, uh -huh. abandoned uh, Flalia, went, gave him the two fingers, and said, uh, "Yeah, we're going to go where the money is," uh, and they're now working for the. Emperor of Lodell. Uh -huh. um, 
so that's the lore aspect of it so then uh, no that's the witness so then you get to be the lore keeper so you get to create some new piece of lore song poetry mural fable theater slang myth cultural movement or games or sports Uh, this is surprisingly difficult. I I had an idea for something that like is a negative term that refers to the viziers in some way. Oh, okay. What can we call them? Uh, grabbers. No, it's like, oh. no, but it's a term you use when you're acting like you know. It's like you're being such a something the, uh, it alludes to them. Okay, yeah, that 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 that'll do a thing. So it's like <laughs> Muppet. You Muppet. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go grabbers. Oh, those those nasty grabbers taking all our money. Go all blimey. This is why we can't have nice things because they keep on grabbing all of our bloody money. Okay. Uh, Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> so I'm just gonna write it up on top, just as a mm -hmm. note. Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. So to call someone a grabber. Mm -hmm. It's like very, yeah. You're, you're saying that they're sort of like you know the the meanest of the mean, the cruelest of the cruel. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it might be like saying to her kids, you know, if they're reaching across the table to grab something, mm -hmm. or uh, it's it's more like someone takes more than. It's like that's it's taking more than. Always, always wanting more. You know, you, they, they, they bleed us dry and they come back and they say, no, you can give us more. Exactly. We need it for our the horrifying war against whoever we're going to go to war against. Yeah. Um, okay, so that is that done. Um, we did forget to do the biographer phase in the last round, I just realized, uh, in, in the last act. Um, so it's uh, my turn then to uh -huh. <laughs> again. We keep doing it at the exact same time. Um, so I've got my patron. So I see disorder or deceit. Yes, laws of the land, or once the people so. I was reading it to myself. Uh, disorder, once the people revolted against the laws of the land, or once the people discarded propriety and social ritual. Deceit, once a clever plot led an innocent into a trap, or once a great and grave truth was revealed. Hmm. Hmm. Um... So I think I gotta do that one. A great truth was revealed because I, I want to big up the hero in some way. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna stay, I think, as a patron because the other ones don't really grab me. Maybe in the last act, but for now, I think I feel like uh -huh. they need to. So. Um, you supported a hero because you saw potential. What did you see? And uh, once a clever plot was innocent of trap was a great and grave truth was revealed. Okay. Um, I, I want to try and like tie it in or conflict with your story about. Um, I'm going to go back to the map. Yeah, all, but all my stories are lies, Rory. So. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so in uh our, so at the bequest of the Emperor, um oh. I had traveled to 
uh, meet with the sorcerers as they were uh, constructing the new uh, meshwork uh-huh. um, that would protect us against the Giganto fence. And because I doubted it was going to be enough, because I'd obviously um, seen something in the hero that was going to um, help as well. Um, and so I'm trying to think. So I, I went and spoke with the the sorcerers and realized uh, in my meetings with them that there was no way um, this construct was going to be ready on time because uh, already the seasons were changing. Um, the and maybe it's the the ebb and flow of that water. So when the as the water rises, it actually pushes their gar- gigantophants towards uh, Lodal. Uh-huh. Um, and hearing this, I called on the hero and said, um, "Your time has come." And I actually, um, well, I, I I searched for them, and they they weren't in. Um, Drasta, uh-huh. uh, but my scouts basically had uh, told me that he was um, in Sarkonid, uh kind of en route from Sarkonid with a, a lowly mercenary of some description, uh, c- conducting some task that was completely beneath their their ability. Um, for obviously they did they did not see the. Um, the power that lay within them. And so I summoned the, the hero uh-huh. and um, as they they still didn't uh, see what their power or their potential was um, and I set about providing all of the um, arranging for the training that they would need. I brought our best um, kind of martial experts uh, to teach them uh, kind of weapon skills um, and all the techniques we'd learned to basically help us in our um, fight against the um, gigant defense. But it was too little too late. Um, uh-huh. The the rumble of the land and the the shaking told us uh, long before we saw them that the gigant defense were under on their way and moving towards us. Um, there was no way the sorcerers were going to have their um, uh, the the meshwork ready in time, and so they gathered around um, the hero. Uh-huh. Um, no, so I think as um, as the gigant fans approached, um, everybody was kind of essentially running to hide and. For some inexplicable reason, the hero simply strode forward. Um, they didn't see death; they just saw, um, I think, a, a challenge to be overcome. And um, the hero began to recite the uh, odes to Ob uh-huh. as they they drew their their sword. And as they did it, the sorcerers. Um, kind of exclaimed in in shock that um that was the sword of um uh, ex- exclastia um which was the item that had been lost in the Sarcona sea um oh. and it, it was an item of incredible magical power um so no, it's not a sword. It's it's a, um, I guess a hammer. And it's loves its blunt force weapons. Yes. Well, wait till you see why. Well, okay. Let's keep it a. Uh, we'll keep it a sword. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. If we're gonna go hammer, let's go hammer. Um, no, a sword will work because of what I was trying to think of. Okay, so um, yes, the sword of Esclastia, and as. The uh, Gigantophants approached and everyone began to, to fall back. 
um, the hero standing alone raised the sword and plunged it into the ground, causing the ground uh, to fracture and crack. Mm -hmm. And um, we all stood amazed as the um, the onrushing Gigantophants, uh, the ones at the head of the pack, slipped and fell into this giant chasm that had been that had suddenly opened before us uh, as a result of them um, using this sword. Um, I, I kind of want to fit in that, um, yeah, the, and the sources couldn't believe what had happened, and it was only upon um, studying the sword afterwards that they realized that the hero had actually modified the sword. Remember we were talking about that whole tech thing going on? Oh, okay. So the, sword, the sword had been modified in some way where um, it no longer... Um, yeah, and so it actually became re renamed as the hero's dagger um, because it was no longer the sword of old. It had become something completely new uh -huh. um and i think that is also part of the great truth is that there was far more to this here to our hero than anyone had ever believed possible dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. great so there is a great chasm that has i think been opened here Let's call it the Fisher. I think. Um, what we call it? Um, something of an interesting name. <laughs> My brain just immediately went the God Scar Chasm, but no, that's taken from the Adventure Zone, so don't do that. Yeah. Um, um, I think it. Uh, I think the Fisher. You know, pen. Change, change, change the color here. Um. The Fathomless Fisher. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, uh, so, Chasm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Fisher Price. The Price Fisher. <laughs> let me just, let me just roll something. Uh, I'm going to call it the Horde Chasm. For the Horde! Okay. Um, so then it's back to you as the lore keeper. No, as the witness. Okay, so the witness is the thing that is... You want to move something along. Okay. Um... Thing. It's like we're working here trying to be like creative performers and we're just getting heckled from the audience the whole oh. time. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what they're like. Um, okay. Uh, let's, how about we move something bigger along, Rory? How about um, the weather starts to go cold? Ooh. And okay. with cold weather comes, thanks to the power of, of, of physics, uh, water turns into ice. So we know that the the, the time is, is is coming near of a new age of the gigantophants uh, coming over to the 
uh, the west of the the west of the mm-hmm. land. So yeah, stuff's getting cold. Oh, so uh, I wonder if um, if I did something like this, if I draw like um, it's like the ice is kind of reaching out. Uh huh. I'm gonna do a little cloud and then some little snow. So yeah, it's not entirely, you know, met up in the middle yet, but it's it's mm-hmm. it's happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then we've got the lore keeper phase. Um, so a new, I'm looking at the cultural movement. Um, Um, or theater, I think. Uh, let's say theater, but it's actually on the um, the hollow theater. Uh-huh. So, and a new series has been created, um, and initiated by the Zonan. That much is clear, uh-huh. and it tells, um. It's okay. This like this isn't meant to be funny, but it's gonna come across as it. Because uh, uh-huh. I was thinking of you know like the tales of monkey, where they're kind of yeah. retelling the epic tales. Okay, but we've got modern technology, so it's almost like a a, a weird reality type thing, uh-huh. where he's now being followed by almost like camera crews who are trying to record everything that the hero is is doing Uh um so um yeah i think uh, like a a really popular series has spun out that basically follows the adventures of the hero and kind of reports on all of the things (laughs) that they have been doing Um, it's like a reality show like cops but (laughs) um but it's kind of enhanced you know so it's Mm -hmm. not all truth um so they're using kind of uh, that kind of virtual holographic technology to kind of enhance it as well. So mm-hmm. if something exciting isn't happening, hey, they're filling it in with stuff. So that their their narrative is being elevated, okay, more and more in people's eyes. So they are, you know, they they're off. They're doing heroic things, but mm-hmm. sometimes these heroic deeds are slightly inflated. Yeah, and so I'm going to call it. The uh, because it is going to be a bit cheesy. I think they're going to call it the hour of adventure. The, ad- <laughs> the adventure zone, and then they sue this other reality. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, um. The Hour of Adventurer? Yeah, no, sorry. My brain was thinking about something else. You know that the phrase of in our hour of need? Oh, yeah. I was trying to think how I could turn that into a TV title. But anyway. The, uh, Ken says the hour of our adventure. That's not our, it's their adventure. Our adventure hour. Our adventure hour, yeah. Um, Okay, so that's the end of the lorekeeper phase. So now we have the biographer phase. Um, so we choose, take turns choosing a companion controlled by another player. Well, that's going to be, uh, we're going to choose each other's character. Uh-huh. And we get to tell like a third person 
Um, something unfortunate, amusing, or scandalous about our other player's companion. Hmm. They kind of besmirch their character in some way, I think. Oh, come on, imagination. You can do it. Give us a read of it again. Um, so um, you want to describe something unfortunate, amusing, or scandalous about the other player's companions. So in our case, companion. Uh -huh. You don't have to agree with that player's interpretation of the companion. Um, but you're going to use a third person. So it's like, I would think of it as like you heard something about them. Okay, so I heard that the patron was embezzling funds. Hmm. Okay. From the from the viziers, so that's where all the money came from. You know, they they have a relationship. You know, a patron's got to have some money somewhere. But uh, so, oh, yeah. so that he that they've been. Hmm. So they've been topping up from the viziers, or because they the the patron comes from Lodal. Uh huh. But he's getting he's getting money from. Or they're getting. Money yeah, he's from. getting. He's, he's getting. Uh, you know, getting a backhander. Getting paid off. Okay. For four reasons. Um. So, just remind me, who was the person that you were rescued again from? Uh, that was the son of the uh, the son of the Cabots. Yeah, so I think the rumors are kind of rampant that um, the bard actually um, had been having a fling with the okay. son, and rumor has it he was basically told if they didn't. Uh, rescue him with the aid of the hero um so the hero was who they wanted all along um that this uh story would be made public um which would have ruined the sun forget about the bard and so the bard didn't want that to happen okay um because the bard would never have that happen to their love. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually reading Heartbreaker at the moment. So <laughs> my my head is all there in the kind of young young male love. Um okay. So I think that is the end of uh, the second act. Cool. So, how are you finding it so far? It's all right. I mean, it's it's dancing monkey, you know, sort of thing. Perform for us, sort of vibe. Yeah. I, I, these these kind of games, I do struggle with sometimes um, because it is so very very open. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, something like a, a a more standard RPG, I can work in because i have you know dice rolls to tell me what to you know how things mm -hmm. go all that sort of thing um but this is this you know it's it's good i i'm getting a very quiet year vibe from it um in that it's like even down to like flip a card there are two things on it and yeah you choose one of them to to resolve essentially so yeah yeah because um I and I'm doing this because I'm kind of debating how far we want to go on mm -hmm. with it given the time. Um, to me, it's one of those things where it's giving you loads of choice, but not actually a whole lot of structure yeah. for it. Yeah, and it's like throwing in more things, and it's like sure you'll know what to do, and it just reminds me of so many games I've tried out where I go, this hasn't been play tested sufficiently with a, like a wide enough people uh -huh. because it's like friends and everyone who you play with gets what it's about uh -huh. and, and they understand inherently how they're meant to play with it um, 
And that's where I kind of like, I find myself going, I'd rather go back and play Untold because it gives me the structure of a story that's going to. Yeah, you play can get. You, you get the hero's journey with Untold. You know, you start, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's there. Here it's, I mean, because I, I, I'm getting the vibe that you saw, like, uh, I'm kind of wanting to wrap it up. I mean, I'm enjoying it, but yeah, I'm also hurting a fair bit. So mm -hmm. I kind of need to be. Uh, so that's yeah. super exciting. So um, that's, yeah, kind of saying, like, until it helps with pacing. And I think that's what a game yeah. like this needs. Oh, stop. <laughs> We're doing it again. <laughs> I won't touch it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it needs to be guided along. And I don't. There's not enough here for me to do that, I think. Um, if you love story, it's kind of like you're preaching to the converted. If you love storytelling, this is just it's another form of storytelling with a different set of uh, very light hand holding to do it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not really doing it for me at the moment. I have to say. <laughs> Well, I don't feel like um, the sense or role of the, you know, that dynamic between the companion and the hero, it, mm -hmm. it kind of, uh, yeah, it, in terms of how that dynamic works and trying to create the epic things for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, cur I'm cur curious kind of from the viewers, so everyone who's in the chat, like, how is it for you in terms of observing the story unfolding because it i think i know what the answer is going to be and it's going to be slow yeah yeah and so ken says it's an interesting idea but it's just too open and i i'm inclined to agree mm -hmm. um it's because yeah i mean i it, with with something like the quiet year you can set it to be as long as you want it to be you can have x amount of events happening or you can go for the full thing go through all of the events and that's that's grand this it yeah it feels big mm -hmm. but almost too big but also like, I, I, I like playing in a space mm -hmm. um the thing on the box, it says an epic game of map making and storytelling. And that, I guess, is what kind of pulled me into it. But we're not really creating a map. Like, at the beginning, I said, kind of, let's really make a point of just marking key things on it. Yeah. Um, but it's not so much, like, there's a lot of stuff we've left off that probably should have been recorded. Um, I mean, I think it would be easier to play in a live environment as well. You know, if I'm sat across the table from you and we just have this big piece of paper in front of us and we can just all scribble and add on to it, um, I think that will help. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the digital don't help with this. Um, <laughs> I will knock it out of your head with the same person, remember? Um, Alex is point there where's the focus where can i put myself into the story i don't really feel like i'm putting myself into the story at all despite as the in, fact i'm using the word i a lot as the bar yes yeah. you're yeah i mean and even in the in the full game you're actually playing multiple different companions mm -hmm. so uh yes that would even be less so like it's more you're playing actors within it. Yeah, that's actually an interesting way of putting it. Like, it does feel more like, I don't know. So there's there's kind of that idea from the title of it, I get that I, I get a kind of Chaucer vibe, you know, because it's all the something's tale. This is like the mm -hmm. companion's tale. Um, and those are very much sort of, you know, stories to be acted and stories that we pass down in that way. It's, yeah, it's a, what's the phrase I'm looking for? It's kind of, it's a strange beast. It's kind of a bit of a, a curate's egg. Go look it up, kids. Yeah. Because um, my sense is we should be, we should have been talking a lot more about the hero and our, like, I feel like us orbiting around that hero. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but it's kind of hard to create those moments. It seems, um, you know, because it's almost like talk about a time where this happened and your role in that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like the story with the time when the hero did something X, Y, or Z, and your role in that happening. That to me is an easier way to tie the two things together. Yeah, I think that would be that would be interesting. Um, because yeah, I do feel very sort of like disparate, I guess, very sort of disconnected uh, from from the hero. And yeah. considering we are meant to be the companions of the hero, I mean, maybe that's a failing in my character creating and world building. But uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think it's a couple of things. I think um, if you had more people, more players because you know theoretically we could have played two i think i would have played like how does play more companions mm -hmm. so you get more angles on it mm -hmm. but in doing so the time would have racked up like a lot more yeah and you're like two-thirds of the way through it and i would imagine at least another hour of play mm -hmm. for just two for just two characters Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's a bit strange. Uh, I do like this though, and I would play this game. Uh, the episode of Batman the Animated Series where the villains talk about how they almost got Batman. Like, yeah. Yeah. Super criminals taking um, down the guys. So, yes, I think I am going to put this back in the box. <laughs> ah, such hopes. Um, there was someone I did when I was going through the reviews, uh, a reference to Microscope came up, which. I've actually been really, I, I bought that book, the PDF, like years ago. And it's uh -huh. one I've been itching to play because I really like how it takes that kind of high level structure to world building. I think that would be a kind of an interesting one to play online uh -huh. with people. Well, dude, if you want to do it over the holidays. Uh, well, not. I think it'd be interesting to compare that with the likes of delve it's almost like searching for this you know what's that kind of group storytelling game yeah but yeah this uh, uh, I yeah. Say, uh, i'd like this more framing like let me tell you the story of herman the beef he passed through our village one day and i of course had to join him to regale the people with tales of his adventure yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what that's it. It. i but honestly i think that's what um the designer, uh, is it Laura? Yeah, Laura Simpson kind of has in her head. Uh -huh. um, just check. Yeah. Um, but it's like that, but it's not being conveyed to the players. Yeah. That's, I that's mean, what I kind of feel like. Yeah, honestly, if I was going to play a game that is all about just open, wild stories of a hero, I would play um, Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Mm-hmm. Uh, by James Wallace, because that is that is all about evoking a sense of fun and grandeur and just big tales about this this one person. And the, yeah, I'm not getting the you know adventure sort of like vibe from it. it, it I, I I don't know. I was kind of feeling more sort of like I was expecting more swashbuckly type stuff. And well. So I was thinking of it more from the like trying to create that sense of us orbiting around this larger yeah. than life character. Um, but it's the way it's structured is it, again, it's like it's very easy for the companion to take over the limelight because mm -hmm. you're telling it from there. You want to push yourself forward in the storytelling. Um, and I think that takes it's something to do about the. You know, we've talked about it. it's like the how you structure the acts and the phrases on the cards to, to mm. draw that out is important. Because yeah, so I I know how much time, effort, energy we put into working on the structure element of Untold. Like that mm. was that took so much, so much, so much work. Mm. Uh, but it does mean that the game is much more. Uh, even though it is, is, is as freeform and open as this game is, um, it's it gives you, and it's been mentioned, it's the the, the skeleton to base 
to hang the story off. Mm -hmm. And I think it needs, th this needs a little bit more of that. And I think if it were more about this, as you mentioned, the, the orbiting thing, I think mm -hmm. if that was pushed a little heavier, then I, yeah. I think that could be work a little better. In my time with kind of Rory Story Cubes, like the number of people I've, I've met who've kind of been like, well, you know, don't tell me how to tell a story because I have that, you know, creativity. I don't need that. Um, and they want as much freedom in which to tell their tale. And, and this I, is where I will raise my eyebrows. Well, and but this is where I think you get games like Companion's Tale, where they're brilliant for people who they want to tell these epic mm -hmm. stories and will fall into it readily, and they don't want to be curtailed by anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas we took the up, you know, that's fine when you're already in that storytelling space. But if you're not in that space already and you want to tell more stories, you need a little bit more structure and support. And that's where kind of uh, the thinking behind Untold came from. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact that I've told the stories with uh, like Rory Story Cubes, I still prefer something that has that little bit more structure mm -hmm. to, to, in which you operate because then you get to be really creative within that. Like how far can you push that boundary? Yeah. Uh, rather than just saying, here's you know this whole vista for you to to play in. Um, I mean, um, I actually like this comment from Ken. Um, I know it's a bit strange, but I appreciate you guys trying out a game and seeing it not be a great fit. It helps show that games aren't always for everyone. Because yeah, you would expect with your heritage that this would kind of be a you know kind of be a lock. It like holy mm -hmm. crap, this is basically a game. You know, oh, a sort of fantastical story building game. Yeah, give it to Rory, the king of mm. imagination. But nah, not today, Satan. But that's okay. Not today, Satan. Rory's making his better stories out of Test of Honor <laughs> and having a good time. Which is all good. I gone. All right. Sorry. I didn't uh, know that I kicked off there. That's all right. You're back. Yeah, you you were you were yeah. grinning insanely for a about 20 seconds there, which is all good. Is that just after I had summoned Satan? Yes. So now we know what the problem is. Yeah. <laughs> Always all messing right. with my Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that sounds like some sort of like, you know, cautionary tale of like the 2020s, Satan yeah. and the Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's all good. All right, so we are going to wrap up there then which is mm -hmm. all good. I mean, I enjoy playing it because I enjoy playing and that's, that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. And that's what we're doing. So, um, we're not going to do a show next week. I, I mean, don't I'm think so. I, yeah. to do. um, I, I think we can have hub games take a break. Okay. We can make that happen. That'll be fine. Um, right. so yeah. Then we will be back. Actually, do you know, I'll be back next Monday. Twenty eighth. IdleCon? No, 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 no. Uh, IdleCon is the 29th to the 30th, so that's mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday. But on Monday, I'll just do some silo stuff in, in the afternoon, just to just to keep the streams going, keep them, keep people happy, keep the stream alive. Because <laughs> we're keeping the stream alive. <laughs> like everybody in Germany and everybody in the UK and Ireland get that. Nobody mm. else. Nobody else. Uh, but it's, but it's, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so th this is kind of like our last one for 2020. Well, kind of. Monday's the, the 28th. Last, yeah, the that, last that official be mess around. Yeah. So that'd be all cool. Um, but yeah, so I guess we, this is where we say, hey, we hope you have a fantastic whatever the next few days are to you yeah to you um yeah it's it's it is a strange time of year and it is a very strange year to be celebrating said time of year um but yeah i hope you have a good holiday season it's gonna be good i hope that you rory have some freaking relaxing time and actually I go will and do something try my best enjoy your um hamper of cheeses and wines and chutneys so much freaking cheese in this house. I was walking around the house this afternoon um, singing Cardi B and Megan The Stallion's WAP, the start of it. 
Uh, but instead of there's some mm, in this house, I was just going, there's some cheese in this house. There's some cheese. It's, it's like 15 minutes of that. I am amazed that Steph didn't stab me. Um, I built I built a cheese fort. We've got so much cheese in our house. Nice. Well, I'm just thinking of how good mac and cheese is going to be when I make some later in the week. Mm. It's going to be a... <laughs> actually. Aqua says wine and parmesan, but I was I did it. I called it Wednesdaydale and parmesan, and it was just like certified brie mm. seven days a week. <laughs> it's just so sort of like I just... <laughs> speaking of cheese, I always just think of uh, Wallace and Gromit. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was a delight all right but yeah um yeah have an awesome time um whether you celebrate whether you don't just mm. do what you need to do and have a good time doing it um i am going to be back tomorrow for a christmas eve um pajamas and dressing gown stream well i'm not going to do any work i'm just going to learn how to play terraforming mars on the app so you're going to have a go. pipe <laughs> no, I'm gonna have um all right, so we got even though we don't do Christmas, we do do presents. And early present for Steph was Is that um, not cheating? Yeah, so um <laughs> just just because I don't believe in Jesus doesn't mean that I can't treat myself once in a while, Rory O'Connor. <laughs> um so it's like yeah, we got this um this little milk jug that froths the milk. Mm -hmm. But he it as well. And it's just sort of like we're fancy now. <laughs> so I'll just be there in the morning with like, you know, my fancy frothy coffee going, mm, yes, yes. And now we'll learn how to terraform Mars, my friends. Let's go. You just yeah. need Steph's hand coming in off camera <laughs> to hand it to you. <laughs> That's it. Fancy Michael. Fancy boy Michael. Um, and I will be searching for the baby cheeses. Well, I don't need to because they're all in the fridge downstairs. <laughs> it's going to be all good. Um, so, yeah, I'll be on uh, the Adam Michael channel tomorrow, 11.30 in the morning. And it'll be so, good. Michael, your homework over Christmas is to create a cheese nativity scene. And I like one of those in the list ones. Yeah, work, work with Steph and create a <laughs> cheese nativity. So, and yeah, if... so folks at home, um, Rory sent folks at Hub Games, he sent, like, these these cool hampers like the cheese and wine and stuff. Oh, you could just so, turn it on its side. Yeah, so that's my plan. I'll have it so it like comes out. It's like a little suitcase thing, so you know that can be in there. So, do you know what's in there? Because there is this little brie yeah. that could be the little baby cheese. <laughs> oh, that'll be horrible. And with that blasphemy, uh, which this time last year would have got us arrested in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, because the blasphemy laws were still in, <laughs> still in control, then we should probably go. Um, but yeah, have a good one. We'll catch up with you soon. This, my loves, is where we wave. See you later. Have a good one. Bye.